do we dream? This is one of life's great unanswered questions. Given that we spend around six years of our lives in a dream state, it's no wonder people want to understand why we do it. Sure, there are theories, and I'll get to them, but there's no clear consensus on why we do it. No one really knows for sure. Or do they? Dreams are strange, to say the least, and for many of us, they hold great significance. So much that we like to share them with others at length, if we can even remember them, and try to interpret their secret and hidden meanings. So, do they actually hold any real meaning? Well, I have some ideas. It's very difficult to disprove most theories. Maybe some of the more fascinating dream phenomena can shed light on the function of dreaming. The term lucid dreaming was coined by Van Eden way back in 1913, although people were writing about this kind of experience as far back as the 1800s. It describes a state in which the dreamer is aware they're asleep, and sometimes has the ability to control events and actions. It most commonly occurs during late stage REM sleep, and essentially allows your conscious mind to control something your unconscious mind normally controls. Lucid dreamers report being able to fly, taste, smell, and touch pretty much anything they want. It's more common than you think, with about 55% of people having experienced the state at one time or another. For starters, participants were asked to perform specific ocular movements if they became lucid while dreaming. By ocular movements, I mean moving your eyes, that's, that's literally it. This is possible actually, and it's kind of ingenious, because eye muscles are free to move during REM sleep. By determining exactly when the sleeper was lucid dreaming, researchers were able to take recordings of brain activity during this state. The evidence showed some interesting and specific brain activity that represents a mixture of both waking and normal REM sleep. It also seems that the brain undergoes a specific altered state of physiology during lucid dreaming that constitutes a hybrid state of consciousness. Studies have shown that the prefrontal cortex as well as the frontal, parietal, and temporal zones become activated. These areas of the brain are responsible for higher order cognitive functioning including working memory, cognitive flexibility, planning, inhibition, abstract reasoning, the list goes on. So, besides being quite entertaining, why do it? Can we learn anything from it? Some abdicate many potential benefits, including boosting creativity and confidence, reducing stress, and as a possible therapeutic technique to treat nightmares, PTSD, and other mental health disorders. Others view the practice as more spiritual and approach it the way they would a meditation, with the intention of increasing a person's sense of the vastness of reality, opening up new realms of discovery. It's even been suggested that some advanced meditation practitioners are able to become conscious of what is beyond the dream state, the deep formlessness of delta sleep. This is questionable at best and in need of much further study. Given our current relatively limited understanding of the brain, it's hard right now to understand how it could be possible to be conscious of deep sleep, because the brain is in a far more synchronized and deeply unconscious state compared to almost any other state of consciousness. But hey, who knows? Despite the evidence, lucid dreaming remains a controversial topic. Alternative explanations have been suggested for the phenomenon. It may be that lucid dreamers are in a daydream-like state of semi-wakefulness. Or are they dreaming normally but have a memory of the dream and believe that they were conscious and directing the dream but were not? It could be a sleep state dissociation, in which the person is both awake and asleep in the dream state at the same time. I suppose it's even possible that people aren't reporting true experiences, but I personally don't think this is what's going on. If lucid dreaming is as real as the evidence suggests, I'm left wondering. If dreaming serves any of the purposes I've already talked about, such as accessing the unconscious, acting out instinctive urges, solving problems, or whether they are simply electrical impulses keeping the brain from shutting down, how does being a conscious witness affect how they play out? Does it hinder or help? Is it a state of heightened reflective consciousness that humans are meant to access so that we can enlighten ourselves about our life, our world, and our purpose? Or does lucid dreaming stand alone in its function to serve an entirely different purpose? Have you ever dreamt of an event only to find out that it happens in your waking life? It's a weird occurrence. Precognitive dreams are dreams that appear to predict the future through a sixth sense, and there's some pretty famous examples of this happening. When the Titanic sank in 1912, hundreds of people came forward with reports of psychic dreams about its sinking. It was even possible to validate at least 19 of them, including a date-stamped letter. Several people apparently cancelled tickets and decided to not travel based on their dreams. Are all 19 of these people psychic? Well, no. In fact, in this case, it's likely to be simple math and the power of probability. Think about it. There's 7.5 billion people on this planet, each having an average of 5 dreams per night, whether you remember them or not. In turn, those dreams support multiple common dream themes, including events like sinking ships and airplane crashes. 
When all of this is considered, in reality, it's highly likely that many thousands of people will dream about a sinking ship on any given night. Probably tonight, too. Now, add in a bit of unconscious insight and media suggestion for a good measure. The Titanic was the world's largest ship on its maiden voyage, and was in the headlines before it even undocked. The media had called it unsinkable. The power of suggestion is immense, and it's no surprise that all this news, attention, and maybe even some nerves about taking such a huge trip infiltrated more than just a few dreams. So, the next time you dream about an event that has nothing to do with you and it comes true, it's probably just a coincidence. Probably. But what about dreaming of your own death? This is a deeply personal experience, and probably not subject to extensive media attention. It's exactly what happened to Abraham Lincoln. Two weeks before he was shot dead in 1865, Abraham Lincoln had a dream about a funeral at the White House. When he asked someone who was in the casket, they replied, The President. He was killed by an assassin. Clearly, he didn't listen, because at the time he was assassinated, he had given his bodyguard the night off. If the premonition dream is about something close and personal to you, some might argue that your subconscious mind is accessing a piece of information that you weren't consciously aware of in your waking state. You just missed it. The brain has so much to process every second you're alive, it only makes sense that some information is lost. So it's less psychic power and more inner feelings or intuition that you're experiencing through your dream. And this takes us neatly full circle back to the question of why we dream. If you don't believe in psychic abilities that manifest in dreams, then precognitive dreams are essentially the window into our unconscious. Of course, as always, some disagree with these explanations of precognitive dreams, and suggest that when matches occur on such a reliable and frequent basis, this can't be entirely down to coincidence. Some of these people turn to a mix of philosophy and physics to understand how precognitive dreams might happen. To truly understand these theories, it is necessary to assume that the future consists of many possibilities, and which one becomes reality is determined by the choices we make. The butterfly effect shows up yet again. Ultimately, common sense would tell us that dreams likely serve many purposes, as opposed to just a single one. And how we choose to understand our dreams and why they happen is largely a product of time and culture. The function of dreams may have even changed as humans have, and continue to change across time itself. What once acted as a rehearsal system for evading predators is now serving to help us navigate the social and technological complexities of modern life and its stresses. Dreaming is vital. The link between dreaming and REM sleep is undeniable, as are the benefits of REM sleep for our health and well-being. So don't stifle them. They're only trying to help you. Sweet dreams. <laughs>